So you're basically saying there won't be a middle class, and if there isn't going to be one, you may as well be on the rich end That's correct. of society. That's correct. Absolutely. And what most, what most financial books say to you is live below your means, you know, don't have a cappuccino. If you have the opportunity, one of the, one of the lessons in the book is go back to school. Yes, but also uh, I learned finance on the streets where he learned it at Wharton. Right. So it's still possible to learn. Is it always about being rich or, or doing something in this world that not only not doesn't just bring us it doesn't just bring us money, but doing something to give back or making an impact somehow, whether it's a, a building project or a corporation or something of that sort. Well, hopefully, but that's that's why we wrote this book together. We don't really need the money, but we are concerned about the uh, economics of our country. Explain for us, Robert, how there is no middle class anymore. What do you mean by that, and what quantifies and qualifies somebody as being in the middle class? Well, there's many reasons for that, but the middle class is not getting ahead. The rich, is, the rich are increasing, but the, uh, the tax laws are written against the middle class. So we just got together. We said we can't change the tax laws right now, but we can change people. So we'd rather teach you how we got rich so that other people can move up rather than move down. Mr. Donald Trump and Robert Kiyosaki. I am honored that you're with me. So somebody just starting out, this whole craze about using your own realtor, going to Staples and finding these kits online and somehow saving yourself some money, you could lose money in the end? Well, you could, but if you did that, I would still recommend you get a real estate attorney to check over the transaction. You could probably save a few dollars that way. But it is a legal transaction, and uh, you got to be very careful because if it's your primary residence, you don't want to be evicted in the middle of the night. We're back. Donald Trump and Robert Kiyosaki define rich. Well, look, rich is a state of mind more than anything else. If you feel you're rich and if you're happy and you're if rich. you have a wonderful family, you're rich. And this doesn't just have to do with money. Define it financially. Forbes defines it as a million dollars a year in passive income, whether you work or not. That's a specific definition of it. Sometimes it's daunting to right. say, I have a credit card with fill in the blank, $10,000 on it, and it has a 30% rate. So that's gotta be the first one I tackle. When I have one with $800 on it at a 5% rate, maybe I just pay that first so I can feel that sense of achievement and progress. I agree with David, you know, you should, interest rates are important, but the way my wife and I did it was we, were, we had like 15 line items we had to go through. We took the first one we could pay off the fastest. We hung it on our refrigerator, and when we paid that thing off, we drew a line through it. And we kept drawing lines through it. So I didn't go after the interest rate, which is good to do. I went after which one can I attack first, and I do mean attack. Robert, uh, where is all of this going? It seems that um, it is high political season to, to sort of target the rich, make them look bad. You're saying that we should be pursuing becoming rich ourselves and not bashing those who already are. Do I have that right? That's my example. If you think the government's here to help you, I'm, I, I think you're badly mistaken. And I think there's no difference between a Democrat or a Republican. They both come from the same bolt of cloth. They look at John Kerry and George Bush. They went to the same school, belonged to the same societies. And they, as you and I know, it's the political action committees that determine which way the votes go. So I, I really feel for the poor and the middle class simply because they have no representation in Congress. In the world of business, it's another thing my rich dad pointed out to me. In the world of business, there are four types of people. And E stands for employee, S stands for small business or specialist, B stands for big business like Bill Gates, and I stands for investor. Our school systems do a pretty good job of educating us for here. So if my poor dad always said to me, son, you go to school so you can get A, job so that's an employee's mentality good benefits you know 401k retirement plan blah 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 my mother on the other hand and I used to argue with my dad I don't really want a job and my mother would say you know don't argue with your dad you know so I don't want a job I, I want to be independent she says why she says, mom I want to be rich 
My mother was a registered nurse, so she said to me, she said, son, the richest people I know are doctors. I said, yeah. So you should go to medical school and become a doctor, a specialist. You know, S stands for smart people, all this stuff. I said, Mom, there's only one problem. She says, what's that? Said, Doctors are smart. She says, you have a good point there. You shouldn't do that. <laughs> I, I was horrible in school. I'm Robert Kiyosaki, author of Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I'm sitting here with my youngest protege, the, the future. This guy is going to be bigger than Bill Gates or the, the guys at Google and all this. And this is young John Paul. We're in Texas. Yes. How old are you, John Paul? I'm 11 years old. 11 years old. And how old were you when you read Rich Dad, Poor Dad? I was about seven years old. Seven years old? Yes. And have you read almost everything so far? Yes, just that. Have you played, I think everything. Have you played my cash flow games? Yes, I have. Okay, now tell the people at home what you've learned so far that's different than what they teach you at school. Well, I learned just about, I, I learned business skills that I need, um, that you need in real life to succeed and to do well in business and investing. And I learned. Um, all the things that I know about money that is my one source, source and the only source I need. Oh, no, that's a good answer, but there's other people. Yeah. <laughs> well, there's a lot of people who want to help so-called the poor. The trouble is they don't know the poor. I mean, they have no relationship. You know, they, I live in Arizona, Phoenix, and the people come from Scottsdale and they're three million dollar mansions and they're trying to relate to a kid who can't get dental work done or they don't have any food on the table. Well my idea of working with the Boys and Girls Club is that let those people solve their own problems. Oh no he does not solve our problems in fact he jokes with me that he I'm not here to solve your problems Trina you solve your own problems. He came up with a game called Cash Flow that teaches real-life lessons to kids, how to manage a budget, how to invest. It seems to resonate with the younger set. About 1,500. No, you're 150. How much is worth? When we met, I didn't have any money, and without her, I would never have completed a lot of my work because Aww. she was the, you know, she is the strength behind me. And I fell back on her many times. I know she didn't marry me for my money, but she has really earned the right. She has her own corporation. She has her own accounts. I mean, she's, she doesn't need me to take care of her. And I think that's really the freedom of the whole thing here. I think that's what her message is. You know? It's so true because when I first, when I really understood investing and understood how to make my money work for me, one of the greatest gifts is I no longer needed Robert. And he didn't want me to need him. I desperately wanted him, Aww. but I didn't need him. And so the, what happened is the relationship got so much stronger because we got to choose to be together just because we wanted to be together, not because there was any kind of dependency.